we've been talking about South Korea and their declining birth rate. This article from the BBC is very thorough and it is highlighting why many women are opting out of having babies or having more babies. On a rainy Tuesday afternoon, Yi Jin is cooking lunch for her friends at her apartment where she lives alone on the outskirts of Seoul, happily single. While they eat, one of them pulls up a well-worn meme of a cartoon dinosaur on her phone. Be careful, the dinosaur says. Don't let yourself become extinct like us. The women all laugh. It's funny, but, but it's dark because we know we could be causing our own extinction, says Yi Jin, a 30-year-old television producer. Neither she nor any of her friends are planning on having children. They are part of a growing community of women who are choosing the child-free life. South Korea has the lowest birth rate in the world, and it continues to plummet to hell, beating its own staggeringly low record year after year. Figures, re figures released on Wednesday show it fell by another 8% in 2023 to 072 This refers to the number of children a woman is expected to have in her lifetime. Replacement rate is 2.1. If this trend continues, Korea's population is estimated to, um, to have by the year 2100. And this is called a national emergency. Globally, developed countries are seeing birth rates fall to hell, but none so extreme as South Korea. The projections are grim. In 50 years time, the number of working age people will have halved. The pool, of el the pool eligible to take part in the country's mandatory min military service will have shrunk by 58%. And nearly half of the population will be older than 65. This bodes so badly for the country's economy pension pot, and security that politicians have declared it a national emergency. For nearly 20 years, successive governments have thrown money at the problem. Um, 379.8 trillion KRW, whichever um, currency that is, which translate into $286 billion. Couples who have children are showered with cash from monthly handouts to subsidize housing and free taxis. Hospital bills and even IVF treatments are covered, though only for those who are married. Such financial incentives have not worked, leading politicians to brainstorm more creative solutions like hiring nannies from Southeast Asia and paying them below minimum wage and exempting men from serving in the military if they have three children before turning 30. Unsurprisingly, policymakers have been accused of not listening to young people, especially women, about their needs. And so over the past year, we have traveled around the country speaking to women to understand the reasons behind their decision not to have children. When Yi Jin decided to live alone in her mid-20s, she defied social norms. In Korea, single living is largely considered a temporary phase in one's life. Then five years ago, she decided not to get married and not to have kids. It's hard to find dateable, a dateable man in Korea, one who will share the chores and the childcare equally. And women who have babies alone are not judged kindly. In 2022, only 2% of births in South Korea occurred outside of marriage. You, you hear the whole chores and childcare. That is a global phenomenon that women keep talking about a perpetual cycle of work. Instead, Yi Jin has chosen to focus on her career in television, which she argues doesn't allow her enough time to raise a child anyway. Korean work hours are notoriously long. Yi Jin works a traditional nine to six job, the, career, the Korean equivalent of a nine to five, but she says that she usually doesn't leave the office till eight and there is overtime on top of that. When she gets home, she only has time to clean the house or exercise before bed. I love my job. It brings me so much fulfillment, but working in Korea is hard. You're stuck in a perpetual cycle of work. Yi Jin said there is also pressure to study in her spare time to get better at her job. Koreans have this mindset that if you don't continuously work on self-improvement, you're going to get left behind and become a failure. This fear makes us work twice as hard. Sometimes at the weekends, I go and I get an IV drip just to get enough energy to go back to work on Monday. She adds casually as if this were a fairly normal weekend activity. She also shares the same fear of every woman I spoke to that if she were to take time off to have a child, she might not have she might not be able to return to work. One 28-year-old woman who worked in HR said she's seen people 
who were forced to leave their jobs or who were passed over for promotions after taking maternity leave, which had been enough to convince her never to have a baby. Both men and women are entitled to a year's leave during the first eight years of their child's life. But in 2022, only 7% of new fathers use some of their leave compared to 70% of new mothers. Korean women are the most highly educated of those in the OECD countries, and yet the country has the worst gender pay gap and higher than average proportion of women out of the workforce compared to men. Researchers say this proves they are being presented with a trade-off, have a career or have a family. Increasingly, they are choosing a career. I met Stella Shin at an after-school club where she teaches five-year-olds English. Look at the children. They're so cute, she cooed. But at 39, Stella does not have children of her own. It was not an active decision, she said. She has been married for six years, and both she and her husband wanted a child, but they were so busy working and enjoying themselves that time slipped away. Now she has accepted that her lifestyle makes it impossible. Mothers need to quit work to look after their child full time for the first two years, and this would make me very depressed. I love, I love my career and taking care of myself. In her sp spare time, Stella attends K-pop dance classes with a group of older women. This expectation that women take two to three years off work when they have a child is common among women. When I asked Stella whether she could share parental leave with her husband, she dismissed me with a look. It's like when I make him do the dishes, he always misses a bit. I couldn't rely on him. Even if she wanted to give up work or juggle a family and a career, she said that she could not afford to because the cost of housing is too high. This article is long, but basically the women are seeing the exact same thing we have been talking about. The men are not pulling their weight in the home. The work hours are too long. The costs are too high. These countries are not listening to women and women are the key. If you can't get women to buy into having babies, the birth rates will continue to plummet. And I am here for it. I hope it continues to just fall off a cliff. That's where I am with it. And I'm I'm loving these articles. I'm glad that they I'm glad that the BBC is talking to these women. I'm not gonna do the whole article, but I will put it in the um it's from the BBC. If you're on TikTok, you gotta look it up yourself. But if you're on YouTube, I'll put it in the description. So this article is coming out of Fortune. Billionaire boss of South Korean construction giant is encouraging his workers to have children with a $75,000 bonus. Let's talk about this. Y'all know I have talked about what is going on over in South Korea and other Asian countries. This whole birth rate thing is phenomenal and fascinating to me, watching what some of these people are doing to try to convince folks basically women to have kids. Let's talk about it. This article, how much is putting your career aside to have a baby worth? A $75,000 bonus at a South Korean construction company, Buyang Group. The Seoul-based firm is handing out 100 million Korean won, $75,000, each time an employee has a baby to help reverse the country's declining birth rate. And it's even backdating payments to those who started a family before the policy came into play. If the current state of low birth rates persist, we will face a national existential crisis such as workforce decline and a lack of defense manpower necessary for national security. Lee Jun Hyun, the founder and chairman of Buyang Group, said at a staff meeting, according to multiple reports, the low birth rate results from financial burdens and difficulties in balancing work and family life. So we decided to take such a drastic measure, as well as awarding a total of 7 billion Korean won or $5.25 million to employees who collectively had 70 babies since 2021. The, the construction giant's drastic measures include potentially footing the bill for larger families' rent. If land is provided by the government for employees with three or more children, we'll let them choose between a birth rate incentive equivalent for three newborns, or a public housing-like rental home with no tenant tax burden or maintenance responsibilities, the 84-year-old billionaire added. What's more, the no-strings-attached benefit will be available to both male and female employees at its 2,500 
um, strong workforce, the company confirmed to CNN. In addition to the birth, the childbirth incentive, Fu Young Group is reportedly already trying to ease the financial burden on parents by helping out with college tuition for employees, children, medical expenses for um, direct family members and child allowances. On top of that, Jun Kyun, Jun Kyun is also proposing the state implement a new tax deduction system to waive corporate and income tax so that employees can receive full benefits of parenting incentives and more companies can follow suit. South Korea's falling birth rate is bad for business. South Korea's government has already subsidized housing for newlyweds, discounted postpartum care for new mothers, and even introduced a baby payment of um, $2,250 for each newborn. But it's not enough to convince the country's severely declining population to have kids. The country currently has the world's lowest fertility rate, and with the number of babies expected per South Korean woman dropping to 0.78 in 2022, worryingly, that figure is expected to fall further to 0.65 in 2025. In comparison, experts say that a rate of 2.1 is needed for a country to maintain a stable population without migration. Now, South Korea's gov corporate giants are being forced to step in and reverse the trend that could see the country's workforce have within 50 years. Samsung Electronics, LG Electronics, and Hyundai have introduced various kid-friendly perks, including on-site daycare facilities, fertility benefits, and even two years of parental leave. But the Bullion Group is the first company to provide substantial cash support for every newborn, according to the Korea Jung Ang Daily. The benevolent billionaire has served jail time. Okay, so yeah, I'm sorry that this is not about, this has nothing to do with the, the family friendly stuff. So I'm going to end that there. I will move into Japan. This was in ABC News. Newborns in Japan at, are at a new low while fewer couples marry. I've been talking about Asia, so I'm just connecting these two articles. The number of babies born in Japan in 2023 fell for an eighth straight year and is the lowest since Japan started compiling birth, certificate, birth statistics in 1899. The number of babies born in Japan last year fell for an eighth straight year to a new low government data showed Tuesday, and a top official said it was critical for the country to reverse the trend in the coming half dozen years. The 758,631 babies born in Japan in 2023 were a 5% decline from the previous year, according to the Health and Welfare Ministry. It was the lowest number of births since Japan started compiling statistics in 1899. The number of marriages fell by 5.9% to 489,000 couples, falling below a half million for the first time in 90 years. One of the key reasons for the declining births out of what like births are rare in Japan because family values are based on paternalistic tradition. Show, surveys show that many younger Japanese balk at marrying or having families. Discouraged by bleak job prospects, the high, co the high cost of living that rises at a faster pace than salaries, and corporate cultures that are not compatible with having both parents work. Crying babies and children playing outside are increasingly considered a nuisance and many young parents say they often feel isolated. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshimasa Hayashi told reporters Tuesday that the ongoing declining birth rate is at a critical state. The period over the next six years or so until the 2030s, when, younger, when the younger population will start declining rapidly, will be the last chance we may be able to reverse the trend. There is no time to waste. Prime, member, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has called the low births the biggest crisis Japan faces and put forward a package of measures that have included more support and subsidies, mostly for childbirth, children, and their families. But experts say they doubt whether the government's efforts will be effective because so far they have largely focused on people who are, all, who are already are married or already planning to have children while not adequately addressing a growing population of young people who are reluctant to go that far. The number of births has been falling since um, 50 years ago when it peaked at 2.1 million. 
the decline to an annual number below 760,000 has happened faster than earlier projections predicting that would happen by 2035. Japan's population of more than 125 million is projected to fall by about 30% to 87 million by 2070, with four out of every 10 people at the age of 65 or older. A shrinking and aging population has big implications for the economy and for national security as the country seeks to fortify its military and counter China's increasingly assertive territorial ambitions. So this is something that many of these countries are facing, um, and we are going to continue watching it because what I don't hear is how they're going to change the rising prices, cost of living, how they're going to change it to where it's not so misogynistic in some of these countries. I'm not hearing much that's going to make women decide to change their minds and have babies. I'm watching this country because increasingly in the United States, which is becoming more and more and more antagonistic to women, I am hoping that women make our birth rate drop to hell in this country as well. So you guys go ahead, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.